So you're probably wondering how it's possible to cheat in iRacing. Now, what I'm going to show you in this video is going to stop you from spinning. It's going to get you closer to the edge of braking every single corner, every single lap. And it is going to feel, I promise, like cheating. Now, I'm not going to waste any of your time. So I will tell you off the bat, what you're going to need is to race on a PC and you're going to need both Sim Hub and some Sim Magic components. If you're not already familiar with SimHub, it's an amazing piece of free software that provides amazing feedback for lots of different things. You can get displays, you can get rev lights, you can get motion, you can get vibration. The, the, the amount of possibilities on SimHub is almost endless. Now, in terms of SimMagic hardware, it depends exactly what equipment you've got. If you've just got regular brake pedals, then this is going to be a little bit trickier for some of you. However, it's still very achievable. So you can see there's two haptic motors on the back of the pedals, which are important on the acceleration and the brake. These are what provide the feedback. Now, along with these motors, you're going to need a power supply from SimMagic. And the last piece of the puzzle is the P2000 pedal module that connects all the power supply and the motors and then to your PC. Now, I know there's a lot of people aware of SimHub and SimMagic's haptic motors, and there's a lot of videos that have come out, but I really feel like no one's stressed how good these are in iRacing for feeling the edge of grip. Now, for example, the Porsche Cup car, um, I could not drive without these pedals. Um, well, not, not fast anyway. I'd be spinning on every corner exit because it's got so much power, no TC, um, and you're watching all the other cars, especially the AI, pulling away from the corner like nothing. And you try and do the same thing and the rear end's gone before you even notice anything's happened. So if you go into the Shake It Motors, Motors set, let me try that again. If you go into the Shake It Motors section, you can customize a few different things here. Now I've played with wheels locks, wheels lock, traction loss and ABS. Now, I don't really care for ABS, it's just in there in case. Uh, but these two here, wheels lock and traction loss, are the most important things. These are what's gonna, these are the cheats here. This is what gives you the feedback that lets you know when you're braking too hard, when the wheels are gonna start locking, and also when the rear tires are starting to slip and you're starting to lose that rear end. There is another one called wheel slip useless hated it didn't work it was uh didn't provide any good feedback traction loss on the other hand completely changes the game so i use it for f4 cars well, i use it for everything but this setup right here is for f4 cars and there's another setup as well for porsche cup cars um now what i'm gonna do is i, I can explain how to set this all up but i might do that in a separate video because it can be quite tedious so to stick to the point what you want to do is you're going to want to copy these settings that i've got here and these settings here for traction loss now these are going to be generic standard settings that work for most cars now these settings can be tuned per car um, and i i recommend doing that so these work perfect for my f4 cars but these setups these work terribly for uh the porsche cup cars i'm showing but you can see that those are two very different curves now this allows me to uh feel the wheel spinning much sooner much much sooner and you can really ride the difference between having that grip and not okay we're now at brands hatch in the porsche cup car and what i'm going to do is i'm going to demonstrate to you how these motors help give you feedback whilst driving a car like this so on the left side of the screen what you're going to see is the trace from sim hub the top four sections are the brake lock uh, for wheels lock and the bottom two wheel spinning you see the trace lifts up on the bottom left now if i was to slam the brakes see i locked up the tires the trace comes up on the top left right we're so going into this corner slam on the brakes when you're going in a little bit too hard you can see that trace starts to kick up and then on the exit of that corner can you see the inside right tire was starting to spin there so again with the left here if we take it left Start to put some throttle down. See how that that tire is starting to spin? You can, I can feel that. The minute you see a trace on that graph, I can feel vibrations through my pedals. So we slow it down through here. So what you'll find there is I was braking, and I could see 
I could feel through my right pedal that I was losing the rear end through braking. So it's not even necessarily on throttle, it's traction loss. So the minute that rear end starts slipping from braking or from acceleration, I'm going to feel it in that feedback in my pedal. And I know that if I'm going to hop on the throttle, my car is spinning. So it just gives you that extra information. So now if I hop on throttle, I can feel it slightly wanting to give, but it, it's, it's not too bad. Brake in a straight line. Get the power down. And look, that's too much power. And I knew it was going to be too much power. I just wanted to demonstrate what the uh, trace would show you putting that power down. So on the limit, what you should get is you should feel that motor just starting to kick in. That way you know you're at the limit when that when that trace reaches 100%. You've, uh, you've spun the car. So yeah, let me just take you on a lap. Now... I don't really drive these cup cars too much, mostly F4, but this car really benefits from the extra feedback. So now I know where the limit is. I can feel it coming for that last corner. You can see that trace was just creeping up. I can feel those vibrations in my foot. I can feel a little bit of vibration, but I knew I had it in control. So a corner like this, it's really easy to spin it out, or if you just gun it. I can feel that trace wanting to fly up. Again, with this corner. If I just nail it, that really wanted to spin there, and I could feel, look at that, the trace is about a third of the way up, 50% of the way up. If you just gun it, you're going to see it spin, and that trace go all the way up. So I'm going to gun it now. Look at that. That trace on the way up of that trace you can feel when that's happening through your pedal right there and then and you can ease off the throttle and you can modulate that right that should be enough information for today what i'm, I'm going to do is if this uh, video gets enough attention and enough people want it i will show everyone how to set up sim hub uh, exactly what you're going to need to do with the pedal reactors um, and how to play with those settings and customize it for each and every car that you want to drive hope you all found the video useful um now i'm still quite a new channel so i'm getting used to making these kind of things and trying to trying to make it nice and easy for you guys to understand what i'm doing on screen and make it make some good content for you guys so uh, a like and a subscribe would be great um and then hopefully i'll see you in the next one